So this is the sheet of steel I'm going to be using to make the bracket to support the reservoir pump combo I'm using. Um, just thought I'd show a little bit of the layout. My, my metal working tools are pretty primitive. I tend to use a paint pen rather than a soapstone because the marks uh, stay put when I use a lubricant when cutting. So, um, and then I use a caliper from you know where. And uh, <laughs> I have a, a square. Uh, I also tend to, I have this on the wall here. It's a, a bend allowance sheet. It's a pretty useful chart when you're bending. So if you really want uh, this edge to be in a certain location after you bend the piece, you really need to add a bend allowance. And so for 12 gauge steel, it's almost a quarter of an inch. So that's what that double line is. And I don't have a metal break or anything, but I, <laughs> I tend to use this six inch vise. And that's pretty much my metal break. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, next step is to cut this thing. So this is my high tech cutting setup, a couple of clamps, and the old table saw. Yeehaw. So that's basically the cutting done. Now it's time to bend this up. So here's a case of just being sensitive to your work piece and your tools that you have available. It became obvious to me that this side of bending in this direction is towards the, the vice's strength rather than the, the outer jaw, which is a bit weaker. So, anyway, spinning it around seems to make things easier. So here's a pretty good shot of the bend allowance in action. Alright, so there we have it. Not too bad for a six inch vise and a hammer. Um, probably once again, overkill. I think it's, <laughs> you know, it's the, I think it's the, the harbinger of amateur engineering. I think when you, when you start building things, the tendency is to just overbuild. And then as you get better, you, you try to set the goal for using as little material as possible. And so, and the professional engineer actually gets the data and does the calculation. But then, I guess they're not really making this part anyway. I'm still trying to master that, so I think this bracket is probably way more beefy than it has to be. But we got a pretty decent fit here. It will be good enough for our purposes. So this is the mounting plate for the radiator and the fan. I cut a hole here, which is roughly the size of the radiator opening. And now I need to basically drill these precise holes uh, for mounting it. And these holes are 105 millimeter or center to center square. And so a technique I've been using to do that kind of thing is essentially printing in one to one scale. I use SketchUp 2016. And with an old HP 1200 printer, I've been able to get these pretty precise, which is surprising even to me, to be honest. Um, so here's the print. Yeah. These calipers. Yeah. You can trust them if you want to. <laughs> but they're approximately correct. Um, so regardless of absolute accuracy, the relative accuracy, uh, verifying here. Um, I'm satisfied that these, at least this printout, is as accurate as my drill press or my skills with my drill press. So anyway, it'll get us pretty darn close. So here we go. Uh, I hope you can see through that hole there. There's one. There's another one. There's another one. And uh, my hand's blocking that one. There we go. So... Not bad, uh, considering. Uh, this is the finished mounting plate for the reservoir pump combo. I gave it a rattle can a paint job just to prevent rust. I uh, drilled these two vertical holes as the mounting holes that go onto the reservoir. These little rubber uh, grommets actually completely come out, so it's not very rigid. Uh, 
I assume it's meant to reduce vibration between this thing and the computer case. But I think it should work uh, just fine. I went ahead and drilled these extra extra holes to mount this um, plate. So I have this uh, piece of ABS plastic material that I just epoxied these two WAGO connectors to. So each connector has three poles and when you close the lever it pinches the, the wires there. Um, so the idea here is just to, to mount this to the side um, to provide a quick disconnect uh, for power coming in. So basically the power will come in from the controller box and I have it rigged so that uh, the power will be power will come on whenever the spindle is on. So the water cooling system will just just work on demand. And then uh, the other two things that are obviously the pump uh, and the the fan run off 12 volt. And then I have a, a, a little voltage regulator here. So this is a a buck converter. It goes from 12 volts to 5 volts. And uh, this is gonna just power a five volt temperature sensor for the for the water coolant. So I'll show that later. In order to reduce vibration, I added these little rubber stick-on feet um, to the bottom of the reservoir. And I also uh, made these little gaskets set up gasket material to go on the sides to sort of better hold the reservoir in, in place. These little uh, rubber grommets, as you can see, they they essentially can reciprocate in and out. And I just wanted to improve the, the fit there to hold the reservoir in place better. Here it is fully assembled. Uh, has our buck regulator, our quick disconnects. You can see the rubber gasket material there filling up the space and mounted on both sides it's pretty rigid which is good um, I just weighed it <laughs> and it altogether just this piece weighs about four pounds and there's no water in it yet so a bit heavier than I expected but so here's the installed mounting plate for the fan radiator so as you can see there the yeah, the mounting plate is obviously painted red there, and the the fan is sandwiched between, so I had to buy these uh, screws that go all the way through the plate and then just through the little tab in the radiator, because if the screws are too long, it'll perforate the radiator itself. So it's quite rigid. Um, you can see there the mounting points to the back of the Z-axis kit. So it's pretty nice. I'm pretty pleased with it so far. And here it is, fully assembled. So it's nice and rigid, which is great. And you can see the mounting points. There's two, two of them over there. Plenty of room between the mounting plate and the stepper motor, as well as the reservoir and the radiator. And we have some room to adjust up and down as needed. So the next thing to do is to route all this tubing and that'll be the next step. Sweet.